New years, new attitudes, new studio, and new problems. New problems being the house Eddie. is not finished yet. Did not finish the house. Sam didn't even visit the house. The whole <laughs> I, time was I was dying gone. sick of the vid. Today we're gonna talk about hard money, how it works, the problems that we faced acquiring the hard money loan, the problems we faced during the loan, and the problems we're facing after the loan. We learned a lot, and being new investors, we don't know how hard money works. We heard about it, so that's why we went into this project trying to get hard money. All the things we're gonna talk about today are things we wish we knew before, so hopefully you guys can get some value out of it. Hard money is a great tool, but you gotta know these tips and tricks and things to avoid in order for it to be beneficial to you. Hard money is a short-term loan, high interest, interest-only loan. Hard money is a short-term, high interest, and interest-only payment loan versus a traditional mortgage where you can get like a 30 years low interest rate but you're paying the principal and the interest every month. The difference is... Hard is money difference. doesn't care <laughs> what your credit is, who your dad is, what color your shoes are. They're much more precisely about the numbers. They care about ARV, which is after repair value. They care about the purchase price. They care about the construction costs and they care about your experience in flipping homes. They do care about your credit. They will check your credit, but hard money isn't hard because of how hard it feels Bruh. paying every month, but it's backed by a hard asset. So it's backed on the property that you're purchasing. That's why it's called hard money. So we're gonna talk about our hard money low and the terms that we had. If you guys wanna see more details on that and the how we acquired this home, you guys can refer back to this video somewhere up here. Um, that'll go into more detail about how we found the home and how we bought it and how we did the hard money, but we're just gonna go into the numbers here. Yeah. Give them numbers. Walking Excel sheet over here. Well, before the numbers. So how did we find the hard money lender? Oh, that is correct. The way that we found the hard money lender is by blasting out emails and making a bunch of phone calls. Google, Yelp, referrals, call people, call contractors, call lenders, call brokers, just call, 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 call. Shotgun approach, as some will call it. Don't work with a broker though. Brokers are problematic, they take extra points. They do help you find the end lender, which is the financial institution or the money that's going to end up in your hands. But if you can avoid working with a broker, you'll save time, money, and obviously, honestly, a lot of headache. I don't know if you'll save time, but... You'll definitely save time because our broker took one month to do our refund. <laughs> so hard money also comes with the possibility of getting a construction loan, uh, which will be the funds that you use to repair the property or build up the house like we did. The only caveats with this, it is like a line of credit. It's basically like a bucket of money that you have access to you have to do the repairs, so you pay for it, and then you go to them and you say, hey, I did these repairs. They send out an inspector. The inspector checks out what you did, sends it back to them. They go, all right, here's your money, depending on the percentage of the job completed and the percentage of the specific area that you're asking for reimbursement for. It's also dependent on your original budget that you submitted to them. So you submit a scope of work budget. Can you submit like 250 and then spend like 550 like we did? No, you cannot. <laughs> Uh, so that's also a problem. You want to make sure your budget's in line and on point. This is obviously something that as you go, you will learn. And if you're dealing with the vid, then the prices of things fluctuate tremendously towards up and not down. So your budget's going to be out of whack. So being new investors and new flippers, we did not know what everything costs. We made estimates by looking on Google and all that. All of that went out the window with the vid because prices went out of control because of the ports blockage and this and that. All the prices, lumber prices, I'm sure you guys have heard of, had gone out of control. We dealt with all of that, so our costs went out of control and we needed more money than what we had. Let's talk about the terms of our loan and how we almost ended up defaulting. Yeah, so we had a 12 month hard money loan and it was getting really close to 12 months and we were not done with the house yet. Why weren't we done with the house? Because Eddie didn't finish building it. So we only had $800 left in our account by the time this entire refi thing was over. We were supposed to have sold the house by November 1st. So a month before that, we realized this is probably not gonna happen. Uh, and we approached our broker and said, hey, we need options here. What options do we get? We could either do a three month extension for half a percent and we can do that twice. So total six months, 1% of the total loan or we can do an in-house refi where we refinance the whole project. We can change the construction loan amount, which is something we really needed to do. 
and we can pay off the original loan, get a brand new loan, new 12 month term, new hard money, all that. Another tip here for you guys is if you are doing new construction in LA, uh, with permit times being anywhere from two to six months, it's really hard to hit that 12 month mark. Make sure your loan is 18 months. It'll save you a lot of headache and money in the long run. Now, unfortunately, what our bitch of a broker didn't tell us <laughs> is that when you refi, you don't pay the same amount of points to the broker and the actual lender that you do when you originate a loan. So the way that this came about is our loan, we approached it a month beforehand. These loans refines everything with hard money usually takes about seven to 10 days. Two weeks gone by, three weeks gone by, nothing's getting done. So I reached out directly to the lender and said, hey, what is going on? I just need this solved. I don't care about my broker. I don't care about the fees or anything. I just need this fixed. She kind of let me know the issues that they had apparently had prior with the broker as well, uh, being problematic. And also uh, come to find out extra $10,000 in loan origination fees that was gonna go in the broker's pocket. So what the broker had done is had filed this as a brand new loan instead of a refinance loan, an in-house refi, we would have to pay a lot more origination fees for a new loan. Because she's a bitch. <laughs> There's no other reason for it. You don't do that, that's, that's so stupid. Basically, we will never work with her again over her trying to make an extra 10 grand on one transaction from us. We ended up getting the refi done properly. Our budgets were put into the right categories and perfected because like we told you, our budget went from 250, which is probably low to begin with, to 550, which is high because of the vid. And we can show you guys what our original budget looked like versus our new budget. And a lot of the new budget stuff how did we come up with the new numbers? Well, we had already spent the money. <laughs> That's basically how we knew. We had already signed the contracts for a lot of the stuff and we estimated the remaining, which was basically the pool and the landscaping. Yeah. That's pretty much the only thing that we didn't have a general idea of the cost of. And a few other things went a little bit over budget, a couple things went a little bit under budget, but it's fine. We're closer to the 550 mark than we are further with the 250. How did they approve us for an extra $300,000 for our construction. I flirted with them. <laughs> <laughs> so originally when we first bought the property, they send out an appraiser and they get an ARV after a repair value appraisal as well. So they estimate how much they think it'll be worth after we're done with the construction. That number was 1.32 million. That's how much they thought we were gonna sell the property for. But because all the prices went up for real estate overall, that helped us out as well. So they sent out a new appraisal for our refinance. And what did they appraise us at? $1.8 million. Now they use that and they calculate a percentage off the ARV. I don't know what our exact percentage is, but the more experience you have and the more you've worked with a lender, you can get a higher percentage of ARV, higher percentage of purchase value, higher percentage of construction costs. What does that mean? So if you are have an ARV of, let's do round numbers, a million dollars. Let's say they'll give you 90% as an experienced investor. You can get up to $900,000. So if you purchase a property for 500,000 and you get 90% of the purchase price as well, you only have to come up with $450,000, which leaves you a margin of $450,000 in loan for repairs, which is what they're willing to lend to you. When you're an amateur like us, you have to pay 25% down and 80% of construction costs and yada yada, a bunch of problems. <laughs> a lot of money out of pocket. Uh, with the refi, we ended up having to pay $20,000 out of pocket to meet our metrics, uh, which was basically the closing cost of the refi. And once we paid that $20,000, that's when we only had about $800 left in our bank account. And then three days later, $190,000 in the account. And we're rich again. As soon as we got the refinance done with only $800 left in our account, we were like, we have to get a draw a loan draw, so we went through that process. What's interesting is we asked for the loan draw on November 2nd, and the money was in our bank account on November 5th. Money, money, money. So that's what's nice about hard money is they can get the money to you really quickly. They can also be really quick when you're buying a property. You can close in you know, 10 days, even earlier, probably if you're a seasoned investor. So basically the main benefit of hard money is they perform fast, you can get higher loan amounts, you don't need great credit, you don't need to have proof of income. There's a lot of benefits to it, but there's also a lot of snake oil 
industry people that you gotta be careful with. We honestly appreciate hard money. As a first time flipper, you're gonna have a really hard time going to a traditional bank and getting all these things approved. So hard money is the way to go. Just be careful. If you guys have any questions or you guys wanna know what hard money lender that we use, hit me with a DM on Instagram and I'll be happy to share that information with you guys. Maybe you guys can avoid going through a broker and save you guys a point there, which is 1% of your loan amount. If you like this video, like this video, subscribe to the channel. <laughs> if you like this video, like this video. If you subscribe to the channel, hit make the sure you subscribe. <laughs> if you haven't already, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. And if you have any questions about what we talked about, leave us a comment down below. We'll see you guys next week with a project update on the house because Sam makes promises that he fulfills. We'll see about that. <laughs>